This is, this shit is real. I knock on Chanel's door. I'm here because I need to know if my plan to seduce Karen will work. And if I succeed, it means I can have my little man Joey stay here a little bit longer with me. <laughs> what for, Ryan? The kid's got a bigger mouth than me? Nah, nah, no he doesn't. I mean, have you listened to the boy lately, Ryan? A voice calls out in my ear. He gets his attitude from your genes, dumbass. The voice continues. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true, Brian. But anyway, if I fail in my plan, it means Joy will go back to L.A. with Karen and his siblings and potentially never see me again. <laughs> no, 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 no. Nah, I, that's not happening. I'm not letting Karen take him out of my life. Mm-mm. My boy's not forgetting his pops. I've got to get Chanel to tell me if I have a shot with Karen. If she says I do, then I'll turn on the charm. Chanel answers the door. She looks surprised to see me. Is this a bad time? I ask her. Um, that would depend on what you want to talk about. Me and Karen. She sighs and rolls her eyes. She doesn't want to talk about her, but I need to. I'm not losing joy. This is my shot to put history in the rearview mirror. And I ain't leaving here until I do it. This is my chance to have what my sisters have. A family. This, as Eminem once rapped, so famously, is my one shot. I snap out of my thoughts to hear. Good, because I don't want to talk about that jerk Santos. We walk in, and Joey enters in too. <sighs> this dude. He acts like he has cotton buds in his ears. I told him to stay in the car while I talked to Chanel. But guess what? The dude's entering her house like it's his palace. I thought I told you to stay in the car. Ain't your fucking dog. Why the hell would you think I would listen to you? Joey tells me. He races off towards the living room. In the living room, he picks up a book from the coffee table. I don't know what it is, but as long as he's busy, I really don't care. In theory, I want to be his dad. But in reality, he's a massive dick. Y'all need to know that. I ain't joking. The kid is. <laughs> hey, look, look. Don't judge until you hear that last episode on the Jawal Nasita podcast. I take parenting that thing isn't going so well for you. Hey, I appreciate if you didn't call my son a thing, Chanel. I mean, he fucking is. But I still appreciate it if you didn't. Chanel sends me a look. <laughs> oh, you like him, don't you? You care about him. Giving nothing away, I say, he's all right. I followed it up with a shrug. Chanel sends me a smile. She knows I do. I laugh it off. <laughs> all right, no more games, she asks me. All right, I cherish the boy. He gives me purpose. He gives me faith. He gives, he gives me fulfillment in knowing I get to nurture him. He gives me the love I've always wished for, but never got to have with my father. I love... Okay, okay, I know y'all are laughing at me right now, but guess what? This dude's not caring one bit. I love my son. I love my son. Let those words come home in your head. No one's going to make me feel bad about thinking that out louder. The kid's got a mouth on him, I say. Chanel laughs. Just like you had as a kid, if I remember correctly? <laughs> Hell no, I had respect for my elders. This boy sounds like a character from Deadpool. The main white dude character. You ain't never seen Deadpool? Where were you, under a rock? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You weren't a saint, Ryan. Hey, I was a poet. A damn good-looking poet. First, reciting written works of poets to your pals doesn't make you a poet. It makes you a chump which I think deep down we both know you already are. Chanel takes out a glass of wine. She pours a drink. I offer to take it, thinking it's for me. <laughs> what, you think this is for you, dumbass? Get the fuck out of here. I wouldn't waste superb wine on a chump like you who's been drinking banana smoothies his whole life. <laughs> I laugh. She's got me there. I bet you're wondering why we're so close. Why we're flirting with each other all of a sudden. Well, the answer for those two questions is, we're close. We're close because, and I don't want to say it, but we used to um, do the magic. Translation, we fucked. 
It was a long time ago, and it wasn't during the time me and Karen were together or during her current relationship with Santos. That dude's my guy. I wouldn't fuck him over like that. Anyway, it's not a big deal. I'd rather get out of there so we can forget it. If that's cool with everyone. Okay. You won't forget it, will you? <laughs> oh, I can see you shaking your head right now. All right, can we get to why we're here, Chanel says. I'm here to fuck you again, I say. Chanel just stares. I'm fucking with you. Chanel pretends to feel relieved. What was that about? Do yourself a favor, Ryan. Leave that train of thought right there and get on the next train. Okay, never say that out loud again. It made me shiver, Chanel says. Hey, you weren't whining before you met Santos. Fuck. Why'd I say that shit? The fuck is wrong with me? Chanel responds with, Do you remember knocking on my door begging me to? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Let's chill. Can we move on swiftly to uh, lighter subjects? I know what you're talking about, Joey shouts. Damn, that kid. I'm going to kill him one day. I try to steer this talk towards healthy waters again. I came to find out if Karen has a boyfriend and if she's still dating Curtis. Nope, they broke up. Chanel moves away. She looks uncomfortable. She won't look me in the eye. He's a movie star or something like that now. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Well, the news they broke up, not the movie thing. I'd rather wish cancer on that dick than wish he becomes something after what he did to me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't judge. The dude seduced Karen behind my back, stole her, went to live with her in L.A. Like, no, no, fuck him. I got depression. I've been through therapy. I deserve this moment of anger. Back to the conversation. I say, good, good. It's good they're not together anymore. Chanel gives me a look of, what are you thinking of doing? Ryan, I know you're not thinking of trying to get back with her. Would that be such a bad thing if I did? I know Karen and I have always been right there for each other. And I know Chanel thinks that too. So why does she sound like I shouldn't pursue Karen? Let's let this play out for a beat. I'm not thinking of starting anything, Chanel. Scouts on her? Scouts on her, I promise, I say. I know all about your promises, Ryan. I shake my head. I'm not going there. But just for context, during our time together, during you know what, I promised to marry Chanel. And I didn't. I lied. Don't give me all that shit. You used her. Yeah, I did. But actually, there's no buts. I fucked up. I hold my hands up. We're not all saints. There's no one on this planet who can claim that they are. Look, she's fragile right now and her head's not right. You'd be taking advantage of her, Chanel says. She's right. I mean, I went through the same thing when Karen left me and what happened? I look at Chanel. I slept with the woman standing next to me, didn't I? I let that sink in for a bit. I need to find out what happened between Karen and Curtis. What did Curtis do to her? It's not your business. Focus your head on your son. I'm doing that, but also know going back to L.A., I can't exactly build something with him. If I know he's going to be back on a plane soon and leaving, can I? So is that why you're looking to start something with Karen? You're hoping to persuade her to stay by starting something? Well, Chanel glares at me. Damn, <laughs> I've been stupid. I realize that now. That was stupid, wasn't it? You think, Trump? Chanel says. Look, she's back here to hire a new manager for her dad's business, but she's not selling the house. She's going back to L.A. because she needs to say goodbye to her friends. She's here to stay permanently. Relax. <sighs> okay, cool. Thank God. It's good to know that. The doorbell rings. I better answer that, Chanel says as she walks away. I head over to see what my boy's up to. He's quiet more than usual. I walk towards the living room where I find Joy reading Fifty Shades of Grey. I quickly grab the book. Hey, I was really enjoying that. It's not a kid's book, bozo. Joy replies. 
Well, you've probably read, but it's all right for you. I'm not a kid, Joey. Oh, your speech pattern just sounds like a kid for nothing then. Show me some respect. How about you earn it, chump? Joey replies. You're really... You're really... Lost for words, chump? I'm sick of this kid. I hear noises coming from the front door. I walk over to find Santos standing by the door with flowers. Hey, bro. Chanel, will you do me the honor of becoming the light of my world by marrying me? I approach. I'm about to burst out in tears. (laughs) Fuck. My dude's doing it. He's finally proposing to his girl. Chanel looks at me. Why isn't she saying yes? What's she waiting for? I'd say yes in a heartbeat in her position. She looks at Santos and then back at me again. She sighs and says to Santos while looking at me, I won't marry you. She turns attention to him. This is too soon. We've only been dating for six months. I say, most people get engaged after a day. Chanel sends me a deathly stare. Santos says, Yeah, this doesn't involve you. Keep your fucking mouth shut. Whoa! Why the drive-by? Where did that come from? She turns back to Santos. Look, Santos, I'm not ready for this. It's not that serious yet. We need more time. When will you be ready? Chanel pauses. I, I don't know. Santos says, I've got other girls that want me, you know. <laughs> I laugh. Who? Are they plastic? Robotic? Santos goes to grab me. Chanel steps in front of him. Don't do this now. You're mad. But the anger should be directed towards me, not him. I look on Santos' face. He looks like he wants to strangle me with his bare hands. And he also looks like he's been stabbed in the heart by Chanel's rejection. This ain't sitting right with me. I need to fix this for him. Buddy, do you want a drink? Santos gives me a look. Fuck you! He says to me, and then walks off. He walks off? What the hell was that about? I look at Chanel. She catches my thought pattern. I told him earlier that we slept together before we started our thing, and it got him riled up and jealous. It's what drove him to propose, I think. He thought there was something still going on between us. Fuck! Why would she do that? They had a good thing happening. Why would anyone so savagely ruin it like that? What could have driven her to do that? Unless... Nah, don't be stupid, Brain. Unless... Nope, not going there, Ryan. She's still in love with you. Could she be? No, 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 no. Why do you think she would be? It was a one-time thing. Would you tell him? Actually, 16 times thing if you include Valentine's Day and our birthdays. Joy walks in. You two slept together? (laughs) Joey laughs. How was it? Did you have to whip her? We did nothing. And never use that language again, please. You just admitted it. I can't wait to tell mom. Boy, do you want to slap? Chanel says. Joy goes quiet. Keep your mouth shut or I'll hunt you down and you know the rest. Now get your ass on my fucking house. I lead Joy out of the house. When we shut it, I say, well, that was embarrassing for you. She's a bitch. Oh, do you want to go back there and say it to her face? Because I'd really love to witness that. There's a tap on my shoulder and a smack. Santos hits me in the eye and I fall hard on the floor. There's blood gushing out of my eye. Santos kicks me in the stomach before turning to see Chanel's father in the driveway. I look up to see Santos heartbroken. He knows he's just lost the love of his life. It's game over for him. Joy walks over to me and says, Well, that was embarrassing for you. This Shit is Real was read by me, Marcus Brown, and written by Joao Nasita.